Ukraine. I think uh, I think they may just just try and decide to uh, defend a potential invade. We don't want any any snafus like we had last time. Yeah, neither team in particular has a spectacular level one. Curse definitely has more sustained damage with those uh, Karthus Qs. They can poke that out, but at the same time, we've got you know Cleaves from Mundo. Uh, so really, neither team know. Both teams know they're not going to pick anyone off. They just want to kind of continue with their regular jungle. Um, you know, just allow their carries to kind of get farm. Nocturne wants to get this blue, so he can jungle uh, up to speed with Mundo. And uh, it'll be interesting to watch. I'm kind of curious whether or not Karthus will try and push aggressively in this mid lane. Karthus has the range advantage over Ryze and actually can sl uh, slow Ryze as well before Ryze can get in range to snare. So if Karthus decides to you know, try and push Ryze into the tower, Ryze you know, will have a little bit more difficulty. But uh, at the same time, Ryze can farm. These. It, it'll probably just turn into a free farm lane until we start seeing the jungle presence. And so that's, that's really key. I, I think bot is our aggression lane. Uh, and then once level six, we'll probably see kind of a passive game until we hit level six with uh, Nocturne. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if Mundo is trying with any early counter jungling. I also want to take a quick note. Just, I just want to take a look at Elements for a second. Playing Leona with the best skin. Yes! <laughs> Iron Solari jumping up in the crowd. He's just like, boom, take that. The best skin. So we got the CV going down around Curse's blue buff. They do have an idea where Crumbs is at the moment. Mundo going to go ahead and take the red buff in their own jungle. So he will be a little bit of a threat with that red very early on. So we may see level two gank. I used to go ahead and wander right back over. Blue buff going to Reginald straight wow. away, but he took quite a quite a chunk though from that golem. Yeah, I mean he is kind of low here, but he will be able to you know use those man, uh, health pots to get back up in lane. And it's it's really interesting starting to see uh, these buffs being passed to the solo lanes. And actually, we see Dyrus chasing down Pobelter up top, uh, going to get in some nice damage there. There's the, <laughs> the little axe throw, but uh, giving Dy uh, Reginald this blue buff, he, you know he can spam a little bit against Karthus. And oh, odd one, one coming in around the crumbs. Red buff, he hasn't decided to finish yet, but crumbs. Whoever he's gets in a, this he's is in a bit of a scary situation. And odd one decides to go in. Odd Crumbs, while he's still in the pit, he has to flash away, he's just still exhausted, and stealing the red buff out from under his nose. Yeah, and so that's going to be huge if he can set Crumbs behind, and that's really what Mundo brings to the table. He's one of the best duelists in the game, and one of the fastest junglers, so he can just, you know, be really aggressive, go after that red. I, I wasn't sure if he was going to have time, because he started off with the wraiths down here, but was able to get in range, and, uh, you know, the rest of the lanes doing pretty well for TSM, but that early jungle advantage is definitely huge, since Curse's aggression is primarily going to come from Nocturne hitting 6. So while we have a little bit of low in the action, I've just been updated that CLG has won game 1 between themselves and Dignitas, so it's good for them. They're heading on into the next round very shortly, but uh, we do have TSM and Curse right here at the moment. Odd one wandering down, going to be stealing some raids. And uh, Cop and, Cop and Elvis are doing a pretty good job down bottom shoving the lane. Tsm, Tsm, they're, they're playing once again defensive, a little bit on the bot lane. Yeah, and I just love this play from Odd One once again, stalling Nocturne from hitting that six. Uh, just you know, spending all that time in that top lane, and uh, that's definitely going to work out for them. And then you know, Olaf, he started off down a little bit mana, trying to get that blue buff for Rise. He burned a lot of his mana, so it wasn't. We saw some aggression against Vlad, and we saw he definitely had an advantage, but not nearly as much as if he was full mana. So now Olaf, knowing he's going to push, he's able to pick up that ward to protect himself against Nocturne, and he has that full mana, and actually getting a mana, mana pot. So he's going to be able to just constantly spam against Pobelter and see if he can get some great harass off that way. Pobelter does have a little bit of an XP lead over Dyrus, though, but we'll see, we'll see how that translates as we go later on to the game. Dyrus definitely has the damage to take out Pole Builder or at least shove him back to tower if need be. But we this crumbs once again wandering his own jungle and Odd One is there stealing his stuff and there's not a whole lot crumbs can do about it. Yeah, and that's uh, good ward coverage by Curse, recognizing that Moon is gonna be coming in there. Uh, kind of hopping all around because I'm, I'm curious. All these lanes have a burst, lot of burst potential. There's oh, Elements lane. jumping on Chaos. A lot of damage going off. They actually use the Ignite, so he's going to have to back off. But the sustain that Soraka has should be able to get him back up as long as he doesn't run into Elements. So he's coming in right again. There's the exhaust, and Elements chasing him down. Gets the pull underneath the tower, but the Flash is going to back off there. And Chaos now chasing him down. So they're very close to getting that kill. In the meantime, Dyrus doing pretty well top, but uh, Chaos almost able to turn that around. 
And then some, you know, just aggression from TSM all through these lanes. Reginald pushing right up onto Karthus, spamming underneath the tower. So health pots being chugged by Cop and Elements, trying to stay in lane just a little while longer. And uh, you know they don't uh, they don't really have much left after that. They are both they are both on their last potion. So if they get chunked out again, they will have no choice but to back to town. Reginald on one pushing up in the mid. Magic doing what he can to farm with those skills onto those mains. And once again, odd one at the Wraith camp, stealing stuff. There's not, like I said, there's not a whole lot Crumbs can do about it. Odd one can just go ahead and do that all day long. Yeah, now, now that Nijack is uh, a little bit out of mana, um, he will be getting, you know, blue buff in about a minute. But uh, we see Reginald just able to continue that control in that mid lane and see if he can, you know, slow down Karthus' farm a little bit. But we do see there's the ward from Pobelter, but Odd One is already up and about, uh, not going to be able to get in range in time. So Pobelter will be pretty safe in this top lane since Gyrus is a little bit, a bit low, didn't go back in that last exchange. Top lane is warded by both teams. Pobelter saw Odd One trying to make his way up. He's like, you know what, no, I, I know you're there. Nothing's nothing, going to happen. You might just, just want to back off there. But the, now that TSM has the advantage bot lane, they're using it as much as they can. They're just going to go ahead and push to tower at the next opportunity. Because there's, there's, they have no more health potions. Oh, but Pobelter in that top lane throws off the ultimate, throws off the ignite. There's the Karthus ultimate coming as well. And the first blood going to curse. Dyrus going down. He had been doing so well in that top lane. But Pobelter hit six before uh, Dyrus did because he's pushing. And so was able to get that aggressive kill uh, along with Karthus' health. Requiem coming down just for a little bit of insurance, just to, just in case, just in case that ult wasn't enough to finish the job. But uh, yeah, Dyrus dying at the top of lane, and we'll have to get back as soon as he can. Exhaust and Ghost are burned for him as well, so he's going to be a little bit of a disadvantage for the next few minutes as well. Right when he comes back up there, but Odd One taking the blue now. Not, it's not just the race; he's taking blue as well. This is counter jungling. So yeah, and that's well. that's huge. Keeping that blue off of Karthus. Uh, Karthus has to spam. Generally, his mana okay. Nijak, he's definitely going to want to get a couple of mana items. Is working on that catalyst because you know he knows that TSM is going to be extremely aggressive. Not allow that blue, and then Rise uh, going to be able to take this. We saw Dyrus checking for a second to make sure that Curse wasn't uh, hopping down there to steal their blue in retaliation. But uh, Rise again is just going to be able to continue that advantage. And now Rise has that you know spam ability where Karthus needs to watch out. There's definitely the potential for the kill there. Karthus working, uh, I believe, towards the Catalyst. We might see a Rod of Ages coming up from, from uh, him earlier, uh, later. Tyr being bought by Ryze. Very mana-dependent champion is going to help boost his abilities as well. Looks like uh, Crumbs will finally get a buff of his own. Getting red buff for him there, yes. And then uh, Chaos Nang Special once again being pushed to power. Now that Cop and Elements have had a little bit of a time to go ahead, back, and buy. But here's the concern. Olaf definitely has that burst damage. Uh, you know, there is always that threat that he can just chase down, you know, Vladimir, pick up the kill with that spam ability, with those axes. But Vladimir is definitely at a little bit of sustain advantage at this point because he was able to get that early kill. So uh, that kind of a matchup, whether or not Vlad can sustain against Olaf, getting that range to Ras versus Olaf's just, you know, kill potential um, is always going to be interesting because Vladimir started off with that early advantage, able to pick up the kill there. Uh, it might, you know, Push the lane in his favor. Cobelter, Dyrus still going at it, and it uh, looks like Reginald's being a little bit aggressive on Night Jackie, just getting those cues in whenever he can. Just show Lou's boss, get a little bit of damage on him, and uh, Reginald does have blue buff while Night Jackie does not. So he's going to be a little bit more sustaining in the mid, and uh, the minion wave will be pushing to him, so he'll just have to go ahead and farm at power as well. Night Jackie will decide to go and back. Yeah, he's, he's got enough for his catalyst, I believe, in a little bit of something. But he's actually going to get the blasting one first, just for a little bit extra AP, a little bit extra damage to bring back with him in the mid. Now, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't see Nocturne coming down bottom for a second here because it was kind of that sweet spot, elements hitting level 6. Uh, you know, Soraka, especially, he wasn't level 6 yet. And so they almost could have had that tower dive gank that we were talking about, just a really aggressive gank down there. Odd one once again, just not letting up, just completely unrelenting pressure on Nocturne. But now, you know, Expecial level six, they can avoid some of that burst potential, and then Cog should be able to farm with the range that he has. Uh, so it'll primarily turn into a free farm lane. But we are seeing Nocturne coming down here. He is going to be in range. You know, sees the pink ward, uh, dropping it down for Dragon, and knows that there's no vision there. So. Uh, actually, no vision for TSM, so we'll see whether or not they dive this. That's always the threat when you have a Leona-Nocturne combo. 
Drums has the ability to sneak down around into the bush, but he's just going to go ahead, decide to get the rest of his team, and I think Curse is going to go ahead here, engage on this dragon, see if they can't get the first one of the game. And uh, right now, it seems that the TSM is really none the wiser. Yeah, they I mean, they, they, saw, they had the pink uh, ward. They don't have great ward coverage from TSM. They have a strong uh, dragon team. If Karthus comes down, he's actually just going to sit mid and, you know, keep Reggie at bay. But a quick dragon for Curse. And so now they've got a little over a 1,000 uh, gold advantage. And Odd One, once again, stealing all this race. All your rates are belong to me. Uh, just <laughs> not allowing, you know, Nocturne to get in there. But... Um, yeah, so you know, def definitely some fantastic counterplay there. I wish I came up with that one. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, Pro Belter, Dyrus, once again. is like, So Dyrus, we got, to, we got a little bit of song from We got two Null Magic Mantles on him to help mitigate some of the damage Pro Belter is dishing out. We also got the Fan Center, but Nocturne oh, is coming in. Missing. On the Chaos, he's stuck in a Tri-Bush Requiem coming down as well. We got the stun. We got everything going down. He's got nowhere to go. Wow, and so there you saw, even with the flash in, even though Elements was just barely out of range to get the pull, they just have so much burst potential. Soraka can't account for it. Kog'Maw doesn't have that great survivability that you know, a champion like Corky or Ezreal would. And so they're able to just combo their stuns, get that damage out there. And Dyrus and Pobalt are just exchanging here. Pobalt might actually chase Dyrus down. There's the ultimate and the ignite. So he's chasing. We have the exhaust going off on the Dyrus, but he's very close to going down, just barely surviving in that top lane. Arthas is ultimate. Just down from a second ago, able to pick up that kill bottom, but uh, Pobelter really, you know, wielding his might in that top lane. I was, I was about to say, Carthasol was like, oh, oh no, wait, no, he used oh, it. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but pretty good game so far for Curse, even though, you know, we do have a very aggressive team from TSM. Uh, and Curse, they definitely have, with the dual AP, they have great late game scaling. The concern is that all these tanky champs, tanky champs are generally a pretty strong counter to AP. You can, if you can survive through the burst damage, then, you know, you do pretty well. AD, physical damage, that's generally uh, what you want to run against, uh, you know, really tanky champs like Mundo, like Rai. So that'll be interesting, an interesting dynamic as the game progresses. So 12 minutes in, we got about 2k gold lead in favor of Curse. Nijack being pushed to tower, but uh, right now it looks like bottom lane is also equalized just a little bit in the push, but it looks like TSM will go ahead and clear the wave, push them to tower as well. Blue buff being passed on to Nijack, he will take that back with him to the mid. But uh, it looks like Odd One and uh, Reginald are being a little bit uh, aggressive. I think they're trying to go in to steal the blue as well, but uh, they said, you know what, we'll back off. We can just push tower instead because Karthus isn't here. So it gets free damage on that tower and then they'll back off once that wave is gone. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely nice to be able to get that early advantage uh, until Cog really gets farmed. They don't have the best early game you know, presence of pushing towers, so anything that you can take gives them some great map control. Uh, and then as the game progresses, once Cog gets farmed, they can definitely just use that range damage from Cog, slowly wear down the towers. And we got the, the slow cap. This is the golf clap. We have the masters going on currently, so, uh, you know, just a, a little bit of a, you know, oh, that was some fantastic play good, by good TSM good, there. Good tower, yes. Mm, good tower indeed. Mm. But once again, Pobelter just has so much sustained damage for Dyrus to deal with right now and uh, actually able to just burst him down, push him out of lane. So it'll be interesting to see how Dyrus gets in this game. Dyrus, you know, o Olaf is definitely a fantastic late game champion, but, uh, you know, once Pobalter was able to get that early advantage, able to get that Hextech, just completely taking control of that lane. Pings going down from Curse. They know there's a ward in the bush bot lane. Nijacky returns to mid with the blue buff, trying to equalize the creep. So right now, 112. Oh, but Nocturne actually, Elements jumping in on Kog'Maw and Nocturne, Nocturne coming down, down as well. So the quick burst is going down, and they are able to get that kill. Soraka is safe under that bottom lane, but... Uh, quick, quick, quick engagements. And Crum, Crum's maybe behind when it comes to all of his, uh, all of his jungle camps, Mundo being in there and taking all of them. But when it comes to kills, assists, Mundo, Adwa not really being the big, biggest team player. Triple zeros. But uh, Crum's 101, he's made up for a little bit of what he's lost. So if, if they keep getting caught, if Nocturne's kill, you know, still getting kills, the counter jungling all of a sudden comes for not really. Yeah, and the concern is going to be, I mean, Mundo has done his job, basically. They they haven't been able to take that early game advantage that Curse has done. We see, you know, taking down that uh, bottom tower, they've been able to get the dragons. Ooh. So, you know, an early advantage, but actually Reginald, Reginald the and they're baiting in Pobelter. Pobelter coming well, in on Dyrus once again, Reginald but he's going to drop really quickly. Dyrus just not taking enough damage, and there's the bait, so there's the kill. TSM knowing 
that Hobelter uh, is like, Hobelter's sitting up top. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I'm a man here. I, I, I've got this lane. So Reginald and Dyrus just baiting him in perfectly. Yep. Like, now, there's no way Ryze is in that bush. There's not a, oh, damn. Crap. Oh, well. But we got Olaf now buying himself a Hex Drinker. We've, we've seen the Hex Drinker save some butts earlier on today. And, you know, I, Ma, I think, fantastic item to build up to as well. This is definitely the, the team to build it against. We, got, we have a lot of magic damage coming in from Karthus, from Vlad. It's definitely going to be a useful item once we build that later on. Yeah, it's, I mean, it will give them that survivability, and that's the big thing. They have so much survivability against the uh, AoE AP damage that uh, the, this magic damage that Curse has. And so with the Soraka, once Mundo and Olaf get in these fights, if they get tanky enough, they might just become unkillable for Curse. Vlad does have nice sustain damage, though. They do have the AoE from Karthus, so the mid-game teamfights are definitely going to be advantage Curse with their burst. But if TSM is able to get any sort of advantage, keep up with farm as the game progresses, uh, there's going to be a point where you know we just don't have a means of dealing with all this tanking pressure and dealing with Cog, dealing damage in that back line. Odd one is being pinged out by Curse, trying to retreat where he can. He gets walled, he gets slowed, he has to pop the ult to get away. A little bit of extra health regen, a little bit of extra movement speed, and Curse will decide to not follow up on that. But uh, top lane, Reggie and Dyrus pushing down top tower. That should be falling momentarily as well, but Dragon is up as well. And Curse will go ahead and decide to take that. So retreating tower for Dragon. Dyrus will take down that tower in just a second. One more, yes. And Dragon should be going down pretty quick for Curse. Yeah, and so another aggressive dragon going to Curse. Cobalter coming in here. He doesn't know that Reginald's back there. Uh, isn't going to chase Dyrus again. So, you know, learning his lesson from last time. But we have elements coming in. Maybe going to engage on Odd One. Nope. Uh, Odd One a little bit too tanky. It'd be kind of a tough fight for them. So just going to back off. Let Corky farm bottom. And we'll see whether or not we have Cobalter's this fight kind of in top. a tricky spot right here. Gets caught out by the Axe True Damage. Forcing the pool. Let's go away. Oh, Reginald flash. flashes in with the stun. Will he be able to get it? No, and Crumbs comes in. The Q finishes the job, but Crumbs is still in pursuit. You got the Requiem coming in. Will Reginald live? Yes, he will, but Crumbs is still around. Oh, Elements now comes in. Will he be able to finish Reginald? I'm not sure he will. Yes, the burst does get him in the bush, and now Dyrus has to get away real quick. They will not decide to follow up on that, but one for one, Crumbs barely getting away from that. Yeah, and so really fan, you know, fantastic play by Reginald, almost able to pick up that second kill. I felt like you know, Dyrus could have been a little bit more up front, uh, run in there. The issue is he didn't want to be kited under the tower, take that tower damage, uh, you know, maybe turn around. He was pretty low, but almost picking up uh, Nocturne, just barely not able to do it. So uh, an even exchange there. Ryze has bought himself a Banshee's Veil, so like, you know what, we're going to see if we can't, uh, we, I, I don't want that to happen again, I want that spell shield, I want to be protected just a little bit more, he's going to get some extra mana from that too, which means extra damage for him, so that's going to be nice, but uh, right now we still also have, we, Curse still has a, a, a good solid, you know, two, two and a half K in gold, that's pretty good. It's interesting though, because TSM, uh, you know, they've been growing together as a team so much, they... They have great coordination, but one of their weaknesses has always been communication. They talk about that, and uh, you saw that last fight. There was kind of a miscommunication between Dyrus and Reginald. You know, didn't recognize, hey, Reginald's got his flash up. Reginald is going to be jumping in for the kill. So we saw Dyrus turn around while Reginald went in. Uh, whereas, you know, if they had both gone in together, a little more aware, they're able to pick up that kill. But oh, Dyrus, Dyrus is a little, a little bit cut here. off. He should Running be able back to get and out. Forth, like, doesn't know where to go, but uh, Poe Belter there just to get a few, uh, few little bit, bits of damage there while he runs away. Now Elements sweeping barren area for wards, just making sure it's clean, and it is. So we may, uh, we may have something happen around the Baron very soon for Curse, actually. Wow, and now with this tanky front line, uh, Mundo knows he doesn't really need to be as aggressive as, as of an, uh, an anti-carry as the game progresses, so getting that red buff onto Kog'Maw, that does give them fantastic range damage, the ability to chase people down, and that's one of the things they're kind of lacking is uh, hard CC, so you know they really need to just combo their slows. All, all of them with their slows, they have the CC from Reginald, but uh, that'll, that slow will allow Kog to kite a little bit more. We'll see some you know, fantastic play from Chaos probably coming into this mid portion of the game. Curse now pushing down mid tower with as much as they can. Cobalter doing some damage to top tower as well, while Dyrus just kind of running around the one axe taking out the entire minion wave. Nice timing, nice aim on that. Get huge tower shots onto Vladimir. But uh, we have all these wards up by Baron. I think Curse may actually be trying to force this. 
Yeah, Quite I think they're going is. after the uh, blue, you know, trying to see if they can keep it off of Reginald. It isn't that big of a deal right now. Maybe even keep it off Karma. I don't know if they're going to give it to Reginald or Karma, but they are able to pick it up just barely. It's actually resetting, oh. so we actually had the steal, or we got the yes, steal. we did have the steal. smite steal from uh, actually Nijacky with, with the steal. steal. So uh, he was able to pick that up. That's you know definitely going to help him out through this mid portion of the game. I, I was a little bit surprised by that, but now, you know, we do have Curse jumping in here. Oh, wow, the well, ultimate almost the stuff, going up. Doctor coming in. in. Rums is going in on Reginald here, and he will be able to take him down. Nijak, he's in the back, though, taking quite a bit of damage on one up front. He's got the fire. He's going to be able to finish the job just a little bit. And now Elements trying to get away. He is clever and he is slowed. But uh, Crumbs also trying to get away. Flashes over the wall just in time. Darius will not be able to connect with that. But one for one, once again. Yeah, so, you know, definitely... Uh, I don't know, kind of a misstep. Curse wasn't able to get all of their, you know, effects out. They wanted to get that kill. If they had waited for the Nocturne ult first, maybe they could have gotten a little bit easier engaged from Leona. If they had hit that Leona ultimate, then very quickly they're winning that fight. And we'll see where they go from there because they definitely, they have a lot of Baron presence. And if they can win any sort of engage early, Vladimir coupled with Karthus uh, is actually going to be a, an extremely fast Baron team. So, you know, we'll, we'll see whether or not that factors into things. If Curse can just pick up a kill, there's always that potential, but then TSM has the same exact threat. We have, you know, the damage that uh, Kog'Maw has, that Chaos has, and actually Chaos going with the Phantom Dancer and pure Doran's build. I just realized that. So he actually doesn't have a lot of damage, but has great mobility, and uh, he has the inherent damage that Kog'Maw has, just one of the highest damage champions in the game. So not needing to build those fast items, just knows he needs to keep his distance from the enemy team. So Vladimir will soon be buying that death cap for how much gold we got. We also get about a thousand gold, should be buying that. Olaf, we got just got the Maw, so we're gonna have a pretty big spell shield on him. A little bit extra damage as well. Elements, and once again, with that Oracles, clearing for wards wherever we can. Good job on him, and KX alone in the bot trying to defend the push. But Odwin, Odwin also has the Oracles for himself as well. But we did have all these wars that were actually oh, they're around on the hunt Baron. bot, not able to get in range. Yeah. As I was saying, the odd one does have the oracles. They, they, they did realize, they did see a lot of wars going down around their blue area. They want to get that clear. They want to make sure that they're eliminating as much vision from Curse as they can. Ward get going down from Pobelter into the Baron pit, but Oddwin is there to clean it up, but not without taking a free hit. Which, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, with his passive, not really a concern. He's just going to regen fine, and so that having that map control will, you know, definitely help them out a lot. We do see pretty good ward coverage for TSM if they can clear out a couple more of the cursed wards, uh, particularly around the Baron area, because they know that's where the fights, you know, are going to be happening at this point in the game. Both teams have a strong Baron presence. Uh, we do have the threat of a dragon as well, but that would probably lead to the other team going for it. And there's wall actually a down. wall, so they are going to be able to zone them off for this tower mid. Uh, Mundo coming in from the river, but, uh, you know, Curse able to just safely get out of there. Odd one, he's coming around, but he decides to clear the ward instead of getting the engage. But Dragon is up. We could be seeing a next battle for objective momentarily. Blue buff being taken by Curse, their own blue buff. Hopefully it doesn't get stolen from here. Nope, it will not be. But like I said, Dragon is up. We may be seeing that fight momentarily. We got the ward down from Odd One, making sure clearing the ward in the bush. Curse is in position. They want to take out that ward as well. Odd One is out in front, in front of the wall. Trying to, he's, he's taking the brunt. Dyrus getting chugged out by the missiles. Oh, Odd One's old. going all got in. The initiation go straight for Nijaki. Doctor he comes in with the open Nijaki. He's in the thick of it. Keox will he be able to fall with the Nijaki goes down first. We got Kogma going down as well, but here comes Reckler. How many people will be able to clean up? Manages to get the kill. All going down. Leona going down. Pole Belter. Very close to Odwin. How are you still alive? No, uh, there we go. Cop Crumbs now pursuing a special. Very low. 150 health. Can we get the missile? We got the heal. Can we finish him off? Valkyrie, can we get something flashing away? Cop in pursuit. Crumbs, can we finish it off? Very low. 100 health. The one no. He ran out of missiles. No, he's got three left. I don't. Oh no, he did run out of missiles, it's the first number, so running out of missiles, Cop, the fight just lasted too long, wasn't able to pick up the kill, yeah. but uh, that's, you know, kind of what you saw, TSM, they don't have a very strong engaging team, they don't have a great means yeah. of forcing a fight, and so they need to pressure these objectives, they can't allow Curse to just take them, but Curse, they, you know, all of the means of engaging and disengaging are really on Curse's side, so yeah. Curse able to decide when they want to go in on a fight, we saw Reginald chasing, uh, chasing, 
Um, Cop off, off to the side here, but Cop was able to use the wall to his advantage and just juke Reginald out. So now Reginald split from the team for a second. Cop was able to live and, you know, Curse able to win that fight and then Nocturne coming down for this dragon. Hey, that was a fantastic team fight for Curse. They couldn't get that Soraka kill. They got their pie, but they didn't quite get the ice cream. But you know what? Four kills plus dragons, pretty, close, pretty good. But right wow. now, Baron. TSM just going straight for it. It is warded. They'll take out that ward. But Curse is around. They do know. We may have another big fight coming very soon. Elements at top coming around. Nocturnal is down. All a lot of the ults are down, but Elements out in front. Cobalt are coming in from behind, and Elements and Reginald together fighting it out. Cobalt are now in front. TSM, they're trying to get all of them to get focusing down. Cobalt are, you will take them down. Night Jackie is next to fall. TSM taking that one. It's like, hey, you know what? We can win team fights too. And the key there is they, they had the ward down, uh, coverage down here. They knew that Nocturne, as he walked past that ward, he hadn't recalled. He went down for the dragon, so he had no mana, no health. So they knew it was a 4v5 situation, and they knew if they pressure Baron because they don't have a good means of initiation, they can force Curse to come over there, bait out the 4v5, and then very quickly use that tankiness to their advantage, knowing Curse just doesn't have enough damage to follow up on it. So really effective play there for, by TSM. Uh, fantastic use of the map, uh, uh, use of the map, and using that Baron to force that fight, and you know take that advantage back. Yeah, so right now, as we hit the midpoint of the game, it really becomes a lot about objectives. You have your dragon, you have your Baron, you have your towers. It's, at this point, it's just now all both teams grouping up full five, trying to see what they can make happen at these certain points. But now, Curse coming in with the pink ward in front of Baron. They might, they're considering it. They're thinking about it. Nijaki and Pobolter are a little far behind, but Ping's going down from TSM. They know they're in the neighborhood. They also have it warded as well. But uh, Curse going to go ahead, fall back, and uh, try and see if they can't assemble once again. You got a three-man push in mid. TSM, all five, pretty close together. So if, if, if Curse gets a little bit out of position, it could end up really badly for them. Yeah, I mean... It, it's hard to say. It, positioning isn't really the biggest factor for Curse right now because they recognize that TSM is it's going to be really tough for them to engage. So they don't really have you know a pickoff team when you have great alts for like Ash, like Sona uh, that can just set up fights. Car, you know, Kennen, uh, Maokai, any number of champions. Uh, they don't have those kind of abilities. They're all very short range. So you know, Curse doesn't need to be as careful as TSM really does in these fights. Uh, whereas TSM, they, they just need to be, you know, grouped effectively, protect Kog'Maw, have their tanky front line, and then as the game progresses, they'll just become a little bit too tanky for Curse to deal with. It'll be extremely difficult for Curse to get more kills, but Curse definitely, because they have that initiation advantage, they can pick, you know, when the uh, fights are for them, and so they can just say, okay, hey, now we've got an advantage, we've got a 4v5, let's jump in there, take them down, combo Nocturne, combo Leona, uh, you know, pick up a kill with the Karth Assault. Get the wall going down from that jacket just to prevent that quick little rush from Reginald. But as you were talking about Kogmar earlier, where was he when you were talking? He was in bot lane. He was away from the team. That was Curse's signal. They saw him there. It's like, hey, let's put some aggression up on mid. Let's force them to their tower. And then, you know, once we get close vision cast, we'll back off. But right now, Cop actually being engaged upon through the Baron wall. But uh, Vlad ult was used. We got a little bit of damage on Reggie and Odd One. Reggie has no choice. But the back off, he is way too low at this point. How much health does he have? About 400, 400, but you know, one or two skills. Actually, Carthasol actually could have finished that. Honestly, with how tanky Reginald is, the fact that they have Soraka, they almost could have stayed there and continued to pressure the fight because they know that Soraka is going to heal Reginald over time. Uh, Reginald, his Banshees, was going to come back up shortly. It, you know, it is a pretty short cooldown. Yeah. So knowing that, you know, Cop was already out of the fight, you know, he's not going to come in at low health. Reginald probably could have stuck around, uh, but you know, at the same time, they didn't want to risk it. They didn't want to go for that, you know, kind of really aggressive play. They know that the late game is definitely in their advantage, uh, as long as you know, I don't know. We don't have any fancy fights from Curse. They're not able to pick anyone off. Have that great sustain from Vladimir. I mean, that is a lot of sustain damage. Crumbs surfing around. We got wards again on both sides of the Baron pit. This is definitely the next objective. Both of these teams want to see what they can do with. But the wall going down. Odd one will be caught out in front. Has no choice but to be burned. The ult. Reginald being focused down by Crumbs. He does go zoom right for the back line. Exhaust going down on Poe Belter. It's got a cluster of damage here. Dyrus will be able to get away. I'm not sure, but Nijak is the first to fall. Goes out and Requiem coming down. Will we be able to get anyone? No, we will not. My special is very low. Yeah, but we Cop, did have uh, Rise here. going down, you know, Curse still in a position where they they can win those fights. They have just enough damage to take them down. 
Um, you know, TSM not tanky enough. Chaos was able to you know stick around through that fight, so that's definitely works out for them. But uh, a one fight for Curse, you know, they're a little bit too low where they can't really press that advantage. So the game will continue to stall a little bit. But um, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, we got the flash, flash in from, from Elements. Elements. The flash away. The flash from Chaos, you know, negating that just almost immediately oh. perfect timing by Chaos. That was close. That was way too close for comfort right there. But oh, once again, oh, going and he's down. chasing him down. He's got the match. We have it. Can we get it? No. One more mortar shot. Can we get it? No. Wow. So close. So so very close. Yeah, just all, barely not good? able to pick up that kill. You know, Elements. Good awareness. Juking down one way where he doesn't have vision. He has to throw out the blind ultimate. Yep. Then coming back. So, you know, really fantastic play those, there. Those artillery shots from Kogma are about 200 damage a shot. Those things, less than a second cooldown. If you get caught in that, if you're slowed, you, you're in a bad spot. You're a really bad spot. But Phantom Dancer being built on cost. So he's, going, he's definitely going for that speed build. Not so much on the damage department. But still, once again, Ward's going down. Baron is still top priority right now. Yeah, and I'm honestly, as, as the game's progressing, you know, I all, I'm, keep on talking about TSM's really strong late game. And I still think that's the case. But at the same time, uh, we do have a lot of physical damage from TSM. And so, you know, if we can see Curse getting some nice armor items, they already have the Aegis to avoid some of that damage. Uh, if they can keep their members alive, then, you know, they have fantastic sustain as well. So, uh, you know, we'll see whether Curse can make that work for them. But I definitely think that, you know, Cog is something to be feared. Nocturne, it's going to be tough for him to shut down Cog as the game progresses. Odd one, once again, going into the pit, clearing the ward, and Cop actually aggroes Baron, just takes a quick hit for himself. But I think TSM might be trying to bait something out here. Odd one's, he's definitely out there, trying, like I said, trying to clear all the wards. He's got the oracles. But it looks like also uh, Reggie and Kax just go ahead. Reggie and Kax. Kax got himself a red buff, so that will be a huge help in the team fights to come. And we have we're at, a, we're at a little bit of a standstill here, right in the center of the map. All ten players in this game very close together. Artillery shots going in from Kongwa, trying to get what he can, but it looks like Curse slowly moving on up to Baron once again, clearing all the wards they see. I think they're going to try and bait out TSM into a fight they don't want to be in. But they're, they're actually retreating back. We got the Mundo ult being popped. Can we get a cleaver on someone? Who are we going to hit? Are we going to hit anybody? Focusing in. Nine Jackie being popped in the bush, but they will not pursue them. We've got Odd One still in front. Who are we going in on? Elements is actually caught out in front, but not a whole lot. But Vlad actually being, getting a lot of people in the old pop up. They're being focused on Trump. Decides to go in on Chaos. Jack's ult still going down. Nine Jackie in the middle of everyone. Elements out in front. Once again, Dyrus taking the brunt of the damage. Artillery shots. Can we do something with that? No. Elements very low. This is a very dangerous moment right now. Reginald trying to see. He's running around to the side. Is this flash up? Yes, it is. Yes. Bill Belter pulls just in time, but Nine Jackie is too far behind. VT Requiem. Are we going to get somebody? We got a lot of damage so, coming in. X Special. 250 health left. And it all started with Nine Jackie. Uh, you know, we saw Mundo just powering through with the ultimate, able to force Nine Jackie off to the side. So. Curse wasn't in that full AoE setup that they want. They want Karthus to just be sitting there the whole time. And actually, Crumbs is going to be walking right into Reginald, and he's going to drop him really quickly. There's the snare. He will have the oh, shield. One more. one more hit. Oh, the artillery's coming to get in. The kill over the wall. And there's a kill for TSM to go along with their Baron. They're able to keep it. And now, with the Baron regen, it is going to be extremely difficult for Curse to deal with this team. Uh, we'll see, you know, whether or not they can organize the fights that they want, but. It's going to be hard. TSM moving down towards Dragon, definitely in a huge uh, lead right now, even though Curse still has that gold advantage. Nocturne wandering over, and uh, you know what? This ended up riding the lightning all the way back to spawn, but we have Baron buff now on TSM, taking Dragon, taking, once again, all the objectives they need. But what will they, can they do anything with the Baron buff? That's what we need to see. We see all these team fights going very well, just very big very big tug of war between both teams. They have an opportunity now to blast out in the lead immensely, but they only have a limited amount of time to do it. The Baron buff already 25% finished. Yeah, I mean, it's they have plenty of time, though, to push. They do have a very strong pushing team. Kogma has such great range uh, that, you know, he can just sit up there at the tower and slowly wear the tower down. And then if Curse tries to engage on TSM, that's kind of what TSM wants. As long as they can keep uh, Kayox alive, keep him in that back row, 
then, you know, they can have the engage on all these tanky frontline champions because, hey, if TSM can force a fight like that, that's to their benefit. So we will see TSM pushing down this mid lane. Uh, Karthus can clear creep waves, Corky can clear creep waves, so they can, you know, try and keep the wave from hitting the tower, uh, which will help them stall a little bit. But um, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see whether or not they can stall enough or whether or not, you know, TSM can just power through it. So we see a lot of members of TSM are also getting pretty sufficiently tanky. And we see Dyrus working towards uh, the Atmos, throwing up the frozen Malin. Odd one out from actually got this gauge on Crumbs going in right on the Chaos. Cax will melt immediately. Odd one now has no choice but to run. True Dare is going to be doing a little bit. Elements caught out in back. Odd one should be able to press him down. But we also got Reginald trying to run away, but he will not. And <laughs> Odd one's still out there in front, but curse. They've got the they've got their two two for one pretty good for them. They've got two members of TSM now. Baron buff gone. And even with that Baron, I mean Curse, you know TSM just should be ta too tanky as a team. But they're able to pick off members of uh, or Curse is able to pick off members of TSM. You saw them getting into Kogma, and that's the big thing. If Curse can take down Kogma, then the fight's theirs. There's just not enough damage output uh, from TSM, but. You know, we'll have to see Nocturne with a really aggressive ultimate just really going for it. And then uh, as a team able to pick up the kill without Nijaki even ulting. They didn't even need to use the ult to get that. So, you know, we'll, we'll see these next fights. That Baron buff loss is definitely huge for TSM though. Yeah, uh, the two, two of the biggest damage dealers on the team without the buff. It's going to hurt their damage output quite a bit. I mean, granted, we still have the true damage on Dyrus. We still got a little something for Mundo being in the middle of all these fights, but still not as much as they need in order to take the lead that they need to finish this game out. And so we are seeing TSM Dyrus making his way down bottom. Everyone just kind, kind of wants to stall out now, uh, farm up, let the game pressure a little bit longer. They, you know, I think we're kind of surprised that they lost that last fight. They were kind of taken aback a little bit. So, you know, they're comfortable with just sitting back some, continuing to farm, get Chaos, you know, all of his final items, get everyone all of their tanking items. But uh, Curse is actually just pushing down this mid lane, being extremely aggressive. So, um, yeah, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see how this goes. Reginald very close, he does have his flash. I thought he almost might go in for Nijacky there, try and pick him off, because there was definitely that potential. And Odd One actually chasing him down now. He used his ultimate, he is going to get the cleave off, actually missing the cleave. There is Reginald coming up, and Vladimir and Nijacky going down extremelly quickly. Pobelter dying, and TSM able to take that fight massively. Curse not in the best position there, completely out of position. Odd one going to take this mid tower as Chaos is dealing the damage, and now this is huge. This is probably going to be an inhibitor for TSM. It's an inhibitor, and it could even potentially be game if TSM plays their cards right. We have a full 40 seconds before Pobelder and Nijacky rejoin the fight. The tower is already gone. The inhibitor could go down in just a few moments. They might be able to just flat out tank those towers and finish off this game. Dyrus, Odd One in front. All the damage they need to take is right there. Chaos and Reginald on the back line. Dealing damage oh, like that. And going Kopp down. Immediately melted. Crumbs and Elements trying to keep them from going after the next of towers. Elements does fall. Crumbs has no choice but to retreat. That All is, five members of TSM TG. going for the tower. TSM gets it. TSM, TSM taking the tower. Curse. Going for the Nexus, and TSM will go ahead and take this series 2 0. GG. And I love the crowd noise. TSM congratulating them for their legendary teamwork, able to take the series 2-0. Uh, so, you know, Dyer is sitting he's there, got, he's got waving the himself off. He's, got the he's, papers. he's tired, you know. <laughs> they're, they're, all, uh, they're all tired from, you know, such an epic game. That's why you, you guys can't see it uh, at home, but we have this, you know, really cool smoke machine here. Just in the middle of the game, it starts, dream you know, here. puffing out just clouds in front of us because the, it recognized how epic the game was. It was like, you know, boom, we have it going. We need some smoke in this room. <laughs> but you know what? I think